California Teachers Association is one of the most powerful unions in the country, and it is purely an organ of the Democratic Party. Recently, the union held a conference to discuss how to indoctrinate school children without their parents' knowledge. One first grade teacher called Blair Wyatt explained that it's best to hold meetings for gender identity clubs during lunchtime so their parents never know. Yes, that lunchtime is kind of that sweet spot where the kids don't need to come early or stay late and kind of eliminates a little bit of that parent interaction if there are kids who would like to attend, but maybe their parents um, are unaware that um, they're interested in participating or unaware that they are out at school. So if you can get it to happen at lunch, that seems like a really good structure to you know, protect the kids' identities and protect and allow them to attend. Amazing that they're admitting this in public. Documents from the conference also show that teachers admit they read students' Google search histories looking for signs of interest in gender issues so they can take advantage of them. We wouldn't know any of this was happening if it weren't for Abigail Schreier. She broke the story. She's the author of Irreversible Damage, The Transgender Craze, and a very brave person. She joins us tonight. Abigail, thanks so much for coming on, for breaking this story. Um, it, it looks, uh, on, on the face of it, from what we just presented, that these teachers are intentionally trying to hide what's going on from the parents of the kids. That's right. The deception is actually the point. It's explicit. And in fact, in both the reporting I did on that conference you mentioned in October, and then I've, I've since seen more recent videos um, uh, of the California Teachers Association, specifically guiding teachers statewide in deception of parents about the clubs, about the membership, that even at the elementary school level, eight and nine-year-olds telling them to rename the clubs, things like Prism Club, so that the uh, parents won't know uh, what's going on in the club and won't be able to, you know, supervise. Since when are teachers allowed to get involved in these sex lives of minor children without the knowledge of the parents. That seems like a crime to me. Well, you know, in one of the videos I watched uh, from, put out by the California Teachers Association, the teachers um, instructed other educators that children as young as seven need support in their sexual identity. Um, and, and they believe it is their job to provide that. And look, if, if this were a matter of parents coming in and saying their child had a particular sexual or gender identity and they wanted the school to support it, that would be one thing. But instead, what the California Teachers Association is doing is they're deciding how to recruit students to these clubs, how to coach them in, in um, you know, uh, solidifying this gender identity or, sec or sexual orientation identity. And they're doing this by deceiving parents, specifically telling teachers how to keep the existence of the clubs and the membership from the parents. I mean, I assume everyone's going to leave public schools at a certain point who can and homeschool or, or whatever. This is too much. But in the meantime, is there anything that could be done to stop it? You know, I, I, I think that, that parents need to get really explicit with kids about things like gender. Um, and, and tell them what's being taught in schools is nonsense. Um, and in some cases, I, you know, if the parents are able to do it, they really should pull their kids out of these schools yeah. because this kind of nonsense spreads. And the teachers, look, these are not, this is not members of LGBTQ doing this. I want to be really clear about that. These are activist teachers. They are looking to t peel the children away from the values of their homes and supplant those values with their own. You know, they're grooming seven-year-olds and talking to seven-year-olds with their sex lives. Like, where are the dads, by the way? I, I, so many questions, so little time. But we are grateful to you for breaking this as you have so many stories like it. Abigail Schreier, thank you.